Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton, and in this video we're going to continue our discussion on rational functions. So in the previous video we talked about how to determine the domain of a rational function, and we also described the transformations used to graph a rational function from the basic rational functions y equals 1 divided by x, or y equals 1 divided by x squared. In this video we're going to talk about how to identify the vertical and horizontal asymptotes for rational functions, and also determine whether a rational function has an oblique asymptote, and we're also going to talk about how to find the end behavior of a rational function. So let's talk about asymptotes of rational functions. The methods that we use in the examples in the previous video are useful for graphing simple rational functions, like functions that can be compared to y equals 1 divided by x or y equals 1 divided by x squared. However, to graph more complicated rational functions, we need to know how to find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and also determine the behavior of the rational function near these asymptotes. So the theorem, locating vertical asymptotes, a rational function of the form lowercase r of x is equal to p of x divided by q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomial functions, where p of x and q of x have no factors in common, so you've already simplified the function to lowest terms. Then you can find out where you have vertical asymptotes by finding out what makes the denominator equal to zero. A vertical asymptote occurs at x equals a if you evaluate the denominator at a and you get zero. So what this means is that a rational function will have a vertical asymptote x equals a if x subtract a is a factor of the denominator, which is a polynomial function, q of x. Whenever the numerator and denominator do have a common factor, we'll need to first simplify the rational function to lowest terms by canceling any common factor that occurs in both the numerator and denominator before you find the x values that make the denominator equal to zero. In the case where a rational function does have a common factor in both the numerator and denominator, then the graph of the rational function will have a hole in the graph at the value of x that makes both the numerator and denominator zero. So for example, consider the rational function s of x is equal to x minus 3 in the numerator and x squared subtract 3x in the denominator. If you want to simplify this function to its lowest terms, notice that the denominator can be factored as pulling out an x as the greatest common factor first. So if you factor out the x, you'll have an x subtract 3 left over, and so you'll have x times x subtract 3 in the denominator, and there's an x subtract 3 in the numerator. So the x subtract 3 are common factors of both the numerator and denominator, and so those can be simplified or canceled out. And then you have just the rational function 1 divided by x. But notice that the domain does come into this rational function s of x. s of x, the domain of that rational function, are all the x values that make the denominator equal to 0. So if you take the denominator, it cannot be equal to 0. x squared minus 3x cannot be 0. And if we factor out the common factor of x, x times x minus 3 cannot be 0, which means that x cannot be 0, this x factor cannot be 0, and x minus 3 cannot be 0 gives you x cannot be 3. So the domain of this rational function is the set of all real numbers except for x equals 0 and x equals 3, or using interval notation, negative infinity to 0, union 0 to 3, union 3 to infinity, each with parentheses. So notice the difference between simplifying the rational function and the domain of the rational function. The original rational function, the domain, are all x values except for 0 and 3. However, if you're just looking at this rational function 1 divided by x, the only value that you can't plug in for the x values into the denominator is 0. Well, that's not the same domain as the original function, so it's not the same function s of x. s of x does simplify to 1 divided by x, but you can still not have x equal to 3. Because if you substitute x equals 3 into the original function, you'll have 0 divided by 0. That's still undefined. So this previous example, the rational function s of x had a common factor of x subtract 3 in both the numerator and denominator. This indicates that x equals 3 is not a vertical asymptote, but rather a hole in the graph instead. So let's notice what the difference between the graphs are of s of x and the graph of y equals 1 divided by x, because they're very similar. If you look at the graph of s of x, which is x subtract 3, all divided by x squared minus 3x, and y equals 1 over x, they are the same graph, except there's going to be a hole in the graph at x equals 3, because the function s was not defined at x equals 3. So whenever x is equal to 3, there will be a hole in the graph. Since the rational function s of x is equal to x minus 3 over x squared minus 3x, if you cancel out or simplify the common factor x subtract 3, it is the same function as 1 divided by x, except x cannot be 3, because the original domain said x cannot be 0 and x cannot be 3. So notice a couple other things about the graph. You do have a hole in the graph at x equals 3, but it looks like you still have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, which is the y-axis. And you also look like you have a horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis. The end behavior of the graph will get closer and closer to the x-axis, or the line y equals 0, whenever x approaches infinity, or if x approaches negative infinity. 
In example three, we're going to locate vertical asymptotes. So simplify the following rational functions to their lowest terms, if possible, to find any vertical asymptotes or holes in the graph. So number one, f of x is equal to this rational function, x squared subtract 6x plus 9 in the numerator, and x squared minus 8x plus 15 in the denominator. So let's simplify this rational function by factoring both the numerator and denominator. Well, the numerator is a trinomial. You have three terms, and it's one x squared. So let's try factoring. You have two numbers that multiply to 9, and the same two numbers need to add to negative 6. Well, the numbers that work are negative 3 and negative 3. So you have x subtract 3 as a factor, and also x subtract 3 is also another factor. Now, the denominator, let's see if we can factor it, because it's also a trinomial. Two numbers that multiply to 15, and the same two numbers need to add to negative 8. So what two numbers will multiply to 15 and also add to negative 8? It'll be negative 5 and negative 3. So x minus 3 is a factor, and x minus 5 is also a factor for the denominator. So notice you have an x subtract 3 as a common factor in both the numerator and denominator. So those can be simplified or canceled, because that's just going to give you 1. And so what's left over will be x subtract 3 in the numerator and x subtract 5 in the denominator. So this is now in lowest terms. You can only simplify or cancel if you have common factors. x subtract 3 is a factor, x subtract 5 is a factor, and those factors are not the same. So this is simplified completely. However, notice that x cannot be 3. Even though it looks like this function you can't substitute in x equals 5 because that will make the denominator 0, you can't substitute x equals 3 in because you'll have 0 divided by 0 because you simplified or canceled the x minus 3 factor in both the numerator and denominator, which would give you 0 divided by 0, which is also undefined. So since the function is now in its lowest terms, we can identify any vertical asymptotes. Whatever makes the denominator 0 after the function has been in lowest terms, that will make a vertical asymptote. So it looks like if you substitute an x equals 5 into the denominator, you'll have 0. So the vertical asymptote is x minus 5 equals 0, or x equals 5. And you have a hole in the graph whenever x is equal to 3, because that is where you had a common factor of x subtract 3 in both the numerator and denominator. And so since there's a hole in the graph at x equals 3, and there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 5, that means the domain of this rational function, f of x, is a set of all real numbers except for x equals 3 and x equals 5. Or using interval notation, it would be from negative infinity to 3, 3 to 5, and 5 to infinity, each using parentheses. So let's try one more. Number two, this time the function g of x is a rational function x cubed subtract 2x squared in the numerator, and the denominator is x subtract 2. So let's see what we get if we simplify this function to lowest terms first, if possible. g of x is equal to x cubed subtract 2x squared in the numerator. Notice that both terms in the numerator have an x squared in common as the greatest common factor. So you can factor out x squared, and then you would have an x subtract 2 left over. And then the denominator is x subtract 2. There's nothing in common between 1x and negative 2, so just leave it as x subtract 2. But notice that you have an x subtract 2 in the numerator and an x subtract 2 in the denominator. Those are common factors now that can be simplified or canceled. And so the function just becomes g of x is equal to x squared. That is in the lowest terms now. But again, because the original function was x cubed minus 2x squared all divided by x minus 2, notice that you cannot substitute x equals 2 into this function because you will have 2 minus 2 in the numerator and 2 minus 2 in the denominator. That's 0 divided by 0, which is undefined. So this function, g of x, is equal to x squared, but x still cannot be equal to 2. And now let's look at if this function has any vertical asymptotes. So g of x is equal to x squared. This function does not have any denominator other than 1. So it does not have any vertical asymptotes, but you do have a hole in the graph whenever x is equal to 2 because that was where you had a common factor of x attract 2 in both the numerator and denominator. And so the domain of this function g of x is negative infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity, all using parentheses. So although there was not any vertical asymptotes for this function g of x, it does not mean that the domain of the function was a set of all real numbers because you do have a hole in the graph whenever x is equal to 2. Now that we know how to find vertical asymptotes by simplifying the rational function to its lowest terms and identifying what will make the denominator equal to 0, now let's talk about how to find the horizontal or oblique asymptotes of a rational function. So the theorem, locating horizontal or oblique asymptotes. A rational function of the form, lowercase r of x is equal to p of x divided by q of x. p of x and q of x are both polynomial functions. And r of x is now a rational function because of the quotient of polynomial functions. If we want to find out where is the horizontal or oblique asymptote for this rational function, we need to determine the degrees of both the polynomial functions in the numerator and the polynomial function in the denominator. Whenever this rational function is a proper rational function, what that means is that the numerator has degree less than the degree of the denominator, 
then the horizontal asymptote for this rational function will be the x-axis, or y equals zero. So in other words, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then if x is approaching infinity or x approaching negative infinity, the ends of the graph, the end behavior, the rational function will approach zero. In other words, the y values will get closer and closer to zero or closer and closer to the x-axis in terms of the graph. That's when the rational function is proper. The degree in the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Otherwise, if the rational function is improper, we're going to use polynomial long division as follows. You take the rational function r of x, which is equal to p of x divided by q of x. You take p of x as your dividend polynomial and q of x as your divisor polynomial. And then you'll actually obtain a quotient polynomial. We'll call it f of x. And then you also have a remainder polynomial, which will be capital R of x. And then you place it over what you're dividing by, which was q of x. And this is coming from the division algorithm using long division. There are two different situations that can actually occur. So number one, if this function f of x, if this quotient polynomial after long division is just a constant, just call it the number b, then the line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of your graph of the rational function lowercase r of x. On the other hand, number two, whenever the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator, then your quotient polynomial after polynomial long division, f of x, will be a linear function. It'll be of the form ax plus b, where a is not equal to zero. So you will have an x term to the first power. In this case, we say that the equation y equals ax plus b is an oblique asymptote, or sometimes people call it a slant asymptote for the graph of the rational function, lowercase r of x. And so this is what happens whenever you have a graph of a rational function with an oblique asymptote. So you have some curve that represents y equals f of x. In terms of its end behavior, the graph won't actually approach a horizontal line whenever x approaches infinity or x approaches negative infinity. The graph will start looking like it's approaching a linear function. It'll look like it'll start approaching this dashed line, which is the equation y equals ax plus b as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity. So in this case, if x approaches infinity, the y values will get closer and closer to this ax plus b linear function which means that the y values will also go off to infinity if the a values are positive. So if you have a positive slope, the y values will increase without bound as x increases without bound. Or if x approaches negative infinity, the function f of x is also approaching ax plus b, and the y values will also approach negative infinity if the a value is positive or the slope of the linear function is positive. So if your linear function goes up from left to right, then if x approaches negative infinity, then the y values will get closer and closer to this ax plus b, which is a linear function, and that linear function, the y values will approach negative infinity, or the y values will decrease without bound whenever the x values decrease without bound. In example four, we're going to locate horizontal or oblique asymptotes. So find the horizontal or oblique asymptotes, if any, of the graph for each of the following rational functions. So number one, the function f of x is equal to this rational function, x subtract eight in the numerator, x squared subtract 5x plus 2 in the denominator. So let's first find out what are the degrees of the numerator and degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator is 1 because the highest power of x is 1. And the degree of the denominator is 2 because the highest power of x is 2. So since the numerator has degree 1 and the degree of the denominator is 2, this is what's called a proper rational function. And so you automatically know that the horizontal asymptote will be the x-axis or the equation y equals 0. If ever x is approaching infinity, the y values will get closer and closer to the x-axis, or the y values approach zero. And if the x values are approaching negative infinity, the y values also approach zero. Number two, this time the function will be g of x is equal to 3x squared subtract 2x subtract 1 in the numerator, and the denominator is 2x squared plus 3x subtract 2. So you have a polynomial divided by polynomial, but we want to identify what are the degrees of the polynomial functions in both the numerator and denominator first. So notice that the numerator has degree 2, the highest power on the x is 2. And the denominator also has degree 2 because the highest power of x is also 2. So you have degree 2 in the numerator and you also have degree 2 in the denominator. So you have a quadratic function divided by a quadratic function. So this is what's called an improper rational function because the denominator has degree 2, which is exactly the same as the degree of the numerator. So we need to rewrite this rational function using the division algorithm or polynomial long division. So we're going to call 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 the dividend polynomial or capital P of x that will go on the inside of the division bar and 2x squared plus 3x subtract 2 will go on the outside of the division bar because that's the divisor polynomial. Find out how many times does the first term of your divisor polynomial go into the first term of your dividend polynomial. So how many times does 2x squared go into 3x squared? 
Well, notice that if you want to get 3x squared after you multiply by 2, you need to multiply by 3 halves. So 3 halves times 2x squared will give you 3x squared. 3 halves times 3x is 9 halves x. And then 3 halves times negative 2 will be negative 3. And then you subtract the entire polynomial. So you have 3x squared, subtract 3x squared. That will cancel out because that's 0x squared. Minus 2x minus 9 halves x is negative 13 halves x. And then negative 1 subtract negative 3 is positive 2. So your remainder polynomial is negative 13 halves x plus 2. But what we're interested in is the quotient polynomial, which is 3 halves. Because it's just a constant, after you do polynomial division, this constant is the horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals 3 halves. In other words, whenever the x values approach infinity, or if x values approach negative infinity, the y values will get closer and closer to 1 and a half, or 3 halves. So let's try one more. Number 3. Let's talk about the function h of x, which is equal to 2x squared, subtract 5x plus 1, all divided by x subtract 3. Again, look at the degrees of both the numerator and the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator is 2 because the highest power is 2, but the denominator has degree 1. So you have a quadratic polynomial divided by a linear polynomial. So this is still what's called an improper rational function. The numerator has degree 2, the denominator has degree 1, and the denominator has a smaller degree than the numerator degree. And also notice that the degree of the numerator is exactly one larger than the degree of the denominator, which means that you'll have an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote rather than a horizontal asymptote. So let's use polynomial division to find out what is that slant asymptote or oblique asymptote for this polynomial function h of x. So the dividend polynomial, 2x squared minus 5x plus 1, will go on the inside of the division bar, and the x minus 3 is the divisor polynomial, so that will go on the outside. So now let's find out what is the answer or the quotient polynomial after we divide. How many times does x go into 2x squared? It's 2x times. So 2x times x will give you 2x squared. 2x times negative 3 will give you negative 6x. And then subtract the whole polynomial. So you'll have 2x squared minus 2x squared. That's 0x squared. So that will just cancel out. And then you have negative 5x minus negative 6x. That's positive 1x. And now drop down the next term. So now you have x plus 1. How many times does x go into x? One time. So you place plus 1 in the quotient. So 1 times x will give you x, and 1 times negative 3 will give you negative 3. And now again, subtract the entire polynomial. So x subtract x will be 0, or just cancel out. And then 1 subtract negative 3 will be 4. So 4 is the remainder polynomial, but we're interested in the quotient. The quotient is 2x plus 1. And notice it's a linear function. So since the quotient is a linear function, that's what's called a slant or oblique asymptote. So the slant or oblique asymptote in this case for h of x will be y equals 2x plus 1. And so the slant asymptote will actually rise from left to right because the slope is 2. So let's summarize what we just found out about how to find vertical asymptotes and also horizontal asymptotes or sometimes o slant or oblique asymptotes for a rational function. So finding the asymptotes of rational functions. Let lowercase r of x be a rational function of the form. Lowercase r of x is equal to a polynomial function in the numerator and a polynomial function in the denominator. So notice that we have the polynomial function in the numerator written this way. a sub n, x to the n, plus a sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, plus dot dot dot, a sub 1, x, plus a sub 0. So this is just the general form for a polynomial function. All the a's are coefficients for the powers of x. And so notice that the highest power of x that you notice in the numerator is n. So the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is n. Whereas the denominator, let's write it out in general form for a polynomial function, b sub m, x to the m power plus b sub m minus 1 x to the m minus 1 plus dot 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 plus b sub 1 x plus b sub 0. So each of these b's are just coefficients for the powers of x that occur in the denominator. And so the highest power that we see in the denominator is m. So the degree of the polynomial in the denominator is m. So number one, the vertical asymptotes of this rational function r of x are the lines, the vertical lines, x equals a where a, if you substitute into the denominator, gives you 0 after the function's been in lowest terms. So if the function's in lowest terms, if you substitute a into the denominator and you get 0, then x equals a is a vertical asymptote. And you may have several vertical asymptotes for a rational function. Number two, if n is less than m, which means that lowercase r of x is a proper rational function, where the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then you'll have a horizontal asymptote for the rational function which will be the x-axis, or y equals 0. If n equals m, where the degrees are exactly the same in both the numerator and denominator, then the lowercase r of x, the rational function, will have a horizontal asymptote 
which will be y equals a sub n divided by b sub m, which this means a sub n was the leading coefficient of the numerator, and b sub m is the leading coefficient of the denominator polynomial. So in other words, the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficients of the polynomials in both the numerator and denominator. And then the last case, if n is greater than m, where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, it's an improper rational function, and r of x will not have a horizontal asymptote. You may have a slant or oblique asymptote only if n is exactly one larger than m, where the degree is exactly one larger in the numerator than the degree in the denominator. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we talked about how to identify vertical and horizontal asymptotes for rational functions. And we also talked about how to determine whether a rational function will have an oblique or slant asymptote. And we also talked about how to find the end behavior for a rational function. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while we work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about graphing rational functions.